have all these nice little things. Okay? So you change automation. Consumer taste change. You send, your, you send the grandkids to school and um, we give them a little something with juice in it. A little juice box. Box made out of what? Paper. Now when a lot of us were in school and we got our milk, it came in little what? Glass bottles. You know? And chocolate milk was always a penny extra. And my mother, rest her soul, never let me borrow that chocolate milk. I don't know whether it was a question of the extra penny, but she probably thought the chocolate milk wasn't good for me. She was probably right. Well, glass. But that's okay because all milk came in glass, right? We had all this, these glass containers. So today when you go to buy your uh, Kroger's or Respects or wherever to buy your milk, it comes in plastic. Hmm. And uh, last night we were at the store and uh, Alice had this little box. We came out of Sam's. And I said, what's in the box? And she said, um, chicken broth. And inside the box were four boxes of chicken broth. Now I'm thinking, honey, don't you realize we're, we're knocking guys out of work and we're steal. Actually, I didn't say that. But there, there's, and there's an example. Okay? Knock on the front of your automobile and see what it's made out of. Okay? How many, have, how many people have chrome bumpers? When's the last time you saw a chrome bumper? Except on a truck. No, they don't exist. You change how we do things. Look at when West Virginia decided to have prohibition in 1914, 300 people lost their jobs because bars closed, Raymond Brewer closed, Schmulbach closed. So, okay. 1947, we run the last um, streetcar. Uh, that's nice, we have an automobile. But, what about all the people who work for the traction companies? So when, when the economy changes, it has an impact on the kind of jobs that we have and that are available. Okay? What most people don't realize is that the American share of world steel production started to decline the year I was born. 1975. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hear any? Amen. 1965? 1955? Okay. 1945. Since then. Since then. Okay. The number of blue collar jobs in America have been the minority of jobs since who was in the White House? Eisenhower. Eisenhower. Okay. Now, 11 years ago or so, I was uh, writing the history of uh, Weird. And uh, if you think Wheeling's been hit hard, uh, Weird and Steel has been. Uh, Weirton has been hit uh, equally hard. The mill is just a, I'd say it's not, it's, it's not even close to what it was. I mean, there are fewer people working in Weirton Steel in 2010 than worked in Weirton Steel in uh, 1910. And in 1910, it was brand new. Okay. And I was trying to figure out why it was that this area was, was doing so poorly in the 90s, particularly because in the 1990s, uh, the economy of the United States created something like 22 million jobs, new jobs, additional jobs. If you're interested, by the way, since 2000, we have, I don't think we've created any new jobs. Okay? But why not in Weirton? And then what I discovered was this. If you looked at towns like Weirton, and to a lesser degree Wheeling, 
the percentage of the population that was devoted to manufacturing was twice the national average. Thirty-some percent of people in this area worked in factories. We made things. We made steel. Well, in a very short period, within um, the time that I left, uh, my last time of being employed at Weird Steel, I worked there uh, eight different years from 1964 to 74. <laughs> and from the time that I left in 1974, it was all downhill. I, I never realized it at, at that point that, that it was probably the impact that I had from <laughs> not working for, for Weird and Steel, but it was amazing. I mean, when I first went into the mill in 1964, there were close to 12,000 employees. 20 years later, even in the 19, late 1980s, there are 8,800 workers in Weird. There are now probably not even 900 workers in Weird. The economy changes drastically, and it changes quickly. Now we think, oh, that's you know the way things are. But look at it another way. Go back to a place like Holiday's Cove in 1900, and you'll see a village of a couple hundred people. It's got wheat fields right now where the steel mills are. There are apple orchards up there on the side of the hill where the football stadium. Up on the, uh, on the other hill, Marlin Heights, there are apple orchards up there. There are orchards and farms up on Marlin Heights. You know, It's a bucolic community. It's a nice little place. It's a little village. A couple hundred people. Ten years later, you have these huge smokestacks. There are thousands of workers. And the, not only that, but the workers come from strange places, speak different languages. There are new churches that are going up, and they're all Catholic, and, and you know, it's, it's just a vast difference. And that occurred in what? Hmm, 20 years. So the, the changes that we've had, remember, 20 years ago is 1990. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> so... Economic change can come relatively quickly. Hold on. I mean, let's look at it. How long was the eight-track eight -track tape around? <laughs> How long was the uh, cassette around? Okay. Now, I, um, may, may I see the little device that you, that you uh, were listening to? You know. Mr. Still, Mr. Stillwell worked for West Liberty, and he probably learned how to do this at West Liberty. <laughs> okay. You all know what this is, don't you? You can't see it? This is, what do you call this? This is a, what's the name of it? M Sonia. Sonia, MP3 player. How many songs do you say around here? Yeah, I've got 650. 650 songs on here. Okay. So who, who's going to buy CDs anymore? Who buys entire albums anymore? Two years ago, um, our oldest grandchildren were in from Virginia, and they were up, and uh, I had a stereo that has a turntable. <laughs> so I put the record on the turntable. And they said, you know, this is a, this is a record. Da, da, da. So I, I want to play a song. And uh, our oldest son says, Garrett says, uh, how do you advance to the next song? <laughs> I said, well, if it's on this side, you use the cueing thing and you move it over and you put it down. And he said, well, how many songs on this side? I said, four or five or six. <laughs> and then he said, well, what do you do then? I said, you have to flip it over. <laughs> Alice and I had a late lunch today, and we're, we're sitting next to, you know, I'm sorry, but I think I should have the right to go over and uh, tell, tell young people how to use table mat. 